Hmm. Interesting. Then I mean, I'm, I'm sure though, Mikel Arteta will be beaming with all smiles here today. We actually have him alongside Mark Edwards, I believe, back at the Emirates, and we'll hear from the Arsenal manager. Uh, three league wins on the bounce, just the one goal conceded. You must be very pleased. I am very pleased. Um, obviously, for the victory in such a special day, and, and then for the way we we played. Um, and the connection that we generated with our people to make such a special day. Well, how was today on a personal level as a former Arsenal player, as yeah. their head coach? How did you live it? Well, I left it. I was ready to play from yesterday. I, I could not wait uh, for the game to happen. I knew the atmosphere that we we're going to face with, with our supporters and um, the way we started, encouraged everything, created a special environment and I really enjoyed it. Where was the game won for you today? Obviously, in the first half, the way we started out of the blocks, uh, how convinced we are, the determined, the quality that we showed, the determination, and, and yeah, we were playing with extra players here because of the support that we had. Uh, results unrecognisable from the first three league games of the season. What's for you been the biggest catalyst for that change? First of all, sticking together. Uh, sticking together, believing in, in what we do. Looking things with perspective, with all the difficulties we have, we have 9, 10, 11 players sometimes out of the team or the squad with, for, with other reasons. We play the two best teams in the world and, uh, and not with a full squad. And, uh, and then for me the biggest thing was that, uh, that these people stuck with the team when we most needed it. So thank you so much. Well, taking that into account, after the Manchester City game, you did. we asked you on Astro, what was your message for the fans? And you said thank you to the fans. What's your message today? The Emirates was rocking. That this win is for them. Enjoy it tonight. It's just for them. Brilliant. Thank, thank you very you. much, Mikel. Cheers. A win for the fans. Many thanks to Mikel Arteta. I think some credit really has to be given to Arteta, Edu, as well as the rest of the people in charge in Arsenal because their summer recruitment seems to be paying off so far. I mean, making Odegaard, Odegaard, Martin Odegaard permanent, I mean, he was absolutely dominating that midfield here today. Aaron Ramsdale... There were a lot of questions about especially the fees being paid for Aaron Ramsdale. There were doubts about his ability. He's definitely in three Premier League games have turned those opinions around, proved doubters wrong. Uh, and, and Takahiro Tomiyasu as well, who's absolutely brilliant today. And you'd say so far, Alan, it's been a pretty successful summer. Well, it has. Early days, but, but it has. And it's interesting listening to Arteta, Michelle. You know, last Five or six interviews I've heard him do, he's, he's always mentioning the fans and that connection. He, he, he's trying to get them on board because obviously there has been a section that haven't been happy. So he's, he's thought about that and he's, he's always thanking them. He did it after the Burnley game. But yeah, I mean, if, if the performances of the new boys today is anything to go by, you'd like to point out, uh, to pick out Tommy Asu, who, who looks like a player who wants to defend first and foremost, and then anything that comes after that is a bonus, which is a nice thing for a fullback these days, a little unusual maybe. But, you know, if he gets a block in, if he stops across, that's a victory for him. And he looks like a great sign in Ramsdale. I mean, he pulled off that brilliant <coughs> save, didn't he, onto the bar, which was a miraculous one, one of the saves of the season that will go down as. Um, and Ben White as well, alongside Gabriel. You know, they brought on Nuno Tavares, Lukonga as well. So these are young lads that are just feeling the way. But um, if, you know, this is a sign of the recruitment and, and, and they've had to be cute in the transfer market. I know they've spent a lot of money in total, but, you know, these weren't huge signings. Ben White at 50 million being the biggest. Uh, you, you're having to make calculated gambles to a certain extent. And at the moment, these gambles look like they, they could pay off. So no wonder Arteta's buzzing after that. Yeah, because they were the summer's biggest spenders, if I'm not mistaken, Jamie. And it seems, for now at least, it's, it's paying off. I can't tell which was the better summer recruitment. I'm not considering Martin Odegaard in the conversation because he was on loan at Arsenal last season. But between maybe Aaron Ramsdale <coughs> and, and um, Tommy Yatsu, I, I can't seem to tell which is the better summer recruitment. Wow, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's still early days with them. But I think what it is, the great thing about... Arteta and Arsenal, and fair play to him because we've all sat here and gave him stick, especially in them first three games of the season, saying he's not the man for the job. But Arsenal stuck by him, the players have stuck by him, and now they've come round and, you, and he's stuck by the players. It's very easy to all of a sudden start going against them, coming out, criticising players. You know, as you start seeing things happen on the training ground 
and then you lose them. But they haven't. They've stuck together as a group, and now you're starting to see decent performances from them. All his players that he's bought in the summer were playing today, and that's a, that's a big deal, you know. I look at Spurs. None of their summer signings started the game today. So that says to me, there's obviously they're not they're not hundred percent happy with their recruitment. But Arsenal have backed them. Young squad, young players, and still loads to learn and loads to get better at. But it's definitely promising we'll start. We'll talk about leaders as well, Jamie, and um, and the lack of them possibly at Spurs. But uh, Odegaard, Michelle, you mentioned, and he's still a young lad. But I think he is a natural leader. I mean, he captains his country, doesn't he? Norway, which is an amazing situation, really. And not just a leader vocally. I think he's one of those that wants the ball constantly. He'll take responsibility, take the ball in tight situations, try and push the team forward. I'll mean, never forget that game against West Ham last season when he, he ran the show second half in their, in their comeback. So, and, and I'd heard that when he first arrived back at the club and he saw the team and the club, it was all a little bit in chaos. He thought, oh my God, what have I done here? What have I joined? Have I made a mistake by coming back here from Real Madrid? But uh, I'm sure he's feeling a bit different now about it all. So, uh, yeah, he, he, I was delighted when they ma managed to bring him back to the Emirates. And I think possibly, Alan, the one that really does need to come through, and he's probably had the most difficult start, but I really think he's going to be an excellent player, is Ben White. Because, you know, for a number of seasons now, I think it's an area that, that Arsenal have really needed to, to get stronger and strengthen and, and actually have a, a dominant player there. And, and, you know, I've, I've watched a lot of uh, Ben White in the last couple of seasons. He had a great season last year for Brighton, not always as a central defender, sometimes as a right back, sometimes as a holding midfield player. The season before, he played a full season for Leeds when they gained promotion out of the championship, didn't miss a single game for them when he was on loan from Brighton there. Um, and, and I think for, for Arsenal to, you know, continue to head in the right direction for them as a club that central defensive position or the twin center halves if you're playing two there really needs to be strong mm. have you seen a yeah. big change then alan since Mikel teta took over well it's been gradually it's been a long way i mean listen in no other walk of business would you employ a rookie to take over such a big job and, and he was a rookie and he's made mistakes along the way, no doubt about it. Uh, I think he's found his feet now. Obviously, people point to the Willian purchase where he thought Willian had helped them reach a top four finish. That uh, backfired badly and he got a lot of stick for that. Uh, but him and Edu appear to be on the same page now. There's been stories that they, they don't think the same way. Uh, but again, Edu, uh, he, he's new to the job. So it, it was never going to happen overnight. But Arteta's learning. I mean, he's a bright man. There's no question, and he's I mean, he's definitely a good coach. Doesn't make you a good manager, um, and he'll be learning how to treat players because you can't always lambast them. You have to take a step back sometimes because you can lose the modern day player. Sometimes they can be a little more fragile than they were in our time. So hopefully he, he's learning that as he goes. You know that man management side of things to keep everybody on board.